Hi there, and welcome back to another Sony Tech Tip. This one is specific to the differences between Rec. 709, Rec. 2020, and P3 color spaces. If you want a little bit more of a primer on color gamut and gamma, please refer to the previous Sony Tech Tip for a general overview. Color gamuts, or spaces, are defined regions of color that a camera can capture and a monitor can reproduce. These are standardized by the large international standards organizations, building on the latest research findings from the different institutions and groups studying imaging sciences and technologies. The ITU, SEMTI, are a few examples of these groups. All of the color you see simulated here cannot currently be captured or shown by any camera or monitor system to date. That being said, we are still capturing and showing more color than ever before in the history of visually based storytelling. At the end of the day, each is a different box of crayons for the sake of coloring an image. There are a lot of factors that go into defining a color space. Tons of math and testing goes into the process. Questions like, where is white going to be? How bright is that brightest white? Is it off-white? Is it creamy? What kind of display technology is even going to be reproducing this signal? That and many more considerations go into the design and standardization of a color space. Those tasked with the responsibility of making sure things are set right in a camera, monitor, or color correction software suite should take the time to read the standards documents that each of these standards groups puts out. They're especially useful if you have trouble falling asleep, so I recommend a double espresso minimum when wading into such documents. The level of monitor you have will determine how many color spaces and gamuts you have available to you. Generally speaking, top-of-the-line professional displays will have the most options for color spaces and gamuts, and lower-cost models will have less options. If you're fortunate enough to have a BVMX300, you're covered when it comes to options for gammas and gamuts. If you were to read some of the Rec. 709 documents, you would learn that there is a specific gamma setting for proper rendition of contrast in a Rec. 709 space. Gamma has to do with the total amount of contrast or dynamic range you have in an image. It's a vital component to displaying color because it determines the maximum brightness and minimum darkness for whatever color you're going to have. For Rec. 709, the gamma number is 2.4. In a monitor like the X300, you can check that setting here. So you just need to go down to your user configuration, go to your input setting, you got to know which input you're trying to look at. For me, I'm on 2K HD on SDI-1. And then I'm going to go down here to my EOTF, which is just another way to talk about your gamma. Just like we have color space up here. The EOTF is electrical to optical transfer function. So just like I've said and we've said in previous videos, a monitor is taking electricity and making light out of it. So it's electrical to optical. Get it? And then this is where I can set my gamma number. So if I know that I'm an HD Rec. 709 project, I need 2.4. If I move to 2.6, you can see the image gets a little darker. This is what you've been experiencing when you've had the difference between working on a cinema display and then showing your video on a regular HD display. I mentioned P3 was designed for the projection environment of movie theaters. Rec. 709 was designed to come into televisions in a home anywhere on the planet. If you think about it, one of the biggest differences between these two viewing environments is the control of the brightness level in the viewing room. A theater is a darker ambient light level, and projectors can get way brighter than a television. A living room can have any kind of brightness level depending on the time of day or where, where you are in the apartment building. Ergo, there's going to be a difference in the contrast setting that is gamma, for P3 versus 709. P3's gamma number is 2.6. P3 was also designed to deal with material scanned from film negatives, which further changes the engineering and color science going on under the hood. A few years ago, when cinema displays came on the market, a lot of folks learned this difference the hard way. Cinema displays come preset with a 2.6 gamma because it's thinking that it's going to be in the kind of environment that a cinema display would be in with the right kind of lighting level. Folks trying to create 709 projects on cinema displays would eventually run into the situation where they would finish their project on that cinema display and then go show it at school or at work 
on a regular television and be horrified when they see the image and everything looks underexposed. Now you know the reason behind what was going on. So that's a quick overview of the differences and reasonings behind these color spaces and gammas that you see as selections in professional grade cameras and monitors. I hope this helps when you're out in the field. See you next time.